Hey guys, Greg at Everyday Cycles, the bike store on the second floor. Got an interesting project today. Um, kind of started it already and I always get these ideas that maybe I should talk about it a little bit. Uh, this is a bullet cargo bike. It is uh, one of the bike feds bikes they use to go around the city and do uh, bike repairs in some underserved communities and other programs that they provide for the youth and whatnot to learn how to work on bikes. Uh, it's, it's a pretty versatile machine. Usually has a big box on the front that they carry their stuff in. And um, it was electrified six or seven years ago. It's got a Bafang uh, BBS uh, 01 or 02. It's one of the smaller mid-drive units and uh, had a big old battery just hanging from under here with a strap just kind of banging around and stuff. And the battery over the years has lost a lot of its life. Um, and the unit's pretty old. This has many thousands of miles on this system. So uh, we're going to upgrade it to a BBS HD motor. All the parts are on the front there. I'll pull those out later on. Um, and a new battery with more capacity so that they can get around town better. Uh, basically, all I've done so far is taken off the control units. There's a, a throttle. There's a small pad that lets you run through the computer stuff and the computer that would normally sit right there. Um, and disconnected some of the, the uh, cabling and uh, wires for the motor system. Otherwise, uh, there's more to go. Still got to remove the unit. And um, it's not a super tough job, but there's a lot of planning on something like this. We're going to try and get the battery to fit right in there real nice so it doesn't bang around and flop around underneath the top tube like the old setup and just generally make it a better, more reliable, and more powerful system. So I'll come back on later on, and uh, Greg, Everyday Cycles, see you soon. Hi guys, we're back. I've got some parts laid out on the deck of the Bullet Cargo Bike. We're doing a BBS HD conversion on this bike, replacing an older unit. I think you talked about that a little earlier. Uh, you may be familiar with some of these parts, but I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, things that we use that are a little bit special and they're optional parts. Um, obviously, we've got the battery. This is a big one. I think it's a 20 amp hour. This is the BBS HD unit and the computer and the throttle. Those are all pretty standard BBS HD kit parts. That's pretty much what you get if you order a stock unit. Uh, things that are extra that we're going to use for this build are the Grin Triple Bob. This is going to give you a mount that mounts on the bottom of the battery, and we're going to put it in behind there. Some clamps. Extension for the battery if we need it. This is a shift sensor with a unit this powerful. Uh, it's good to have a shift interrupter. What it does is when you're shifting gears with your normal... Uh, derailleur system, it will temporarily interrupt the power as you go between gears so you don't overpower the derailleur system and the, uh, the chain. So that's something that's important, especially on the high power units. We're going with a 42 tooth chain ring, and this one has more offset. It's, it's pushed in further than the stock unit, which is going to give us a little bit better chain line. It also has a narrow wide, so if you go up to an 11 speed or somewhere in there, that uh, it will have the narrow wide anti-drop setup on it. We're using a nine speed. I feel like a nine speed chain is, is more durable and there's plenty of gears for a powerful mo motor like this. Um, this is a spacer in case we need it, just to adjust the chain line a little bit. This is an interesting little unit. Um, all these are leaky parts, by the way. Um, this is called a one nut. This replaces the two nut system that you would normally use on a BBS motor install. Um, the cool thing about it is you torque it on and then it's got a couple of lock nuts that lock this sucker in place. So you'll get a, a lot less likelihood that you'll have a motor that comes loose on you. And this guy also does the same thing. This is a, a, a torque arm that's going to keep the motor from rotating uh, and keep it in place where it's supposed to be. Um, those are both things that help it maintain its position on the frame. So those are some optional parts. I think you get your BBS HD unit. You're probably looking at an extra hundred and a half, two hundred bucks for all these things, but they make your system much more reliable, and they also make it last longer. Um, this particular unit came from California e-bikes. 
Uh, these, I think, came from Golden Motor. You can get them a lot of places. Um, and then Grin does the, uh, the triple bob. So those are some optional parts, but I think they make the install much more reliable. And we'll take a look at it once it's done, but that's kind of a basic idea of some extra things we're doing on this particular install. So we're going to get at it, and uh, I think we'll talk about it when we're done. There, if, if there's anything special that we had to do to really kind of tech this one up, I'll maybe make a quick video on it. But it all comes down to kind of routing stuff where it needs to go and, and understanding what the install is, uh, is going to be when you're finished. So uh, there you go. We'll see you soon. Hi, guys. So we've made some progress on the install on this bullet for the uh, Bafang BBS HD. Just wanted to real quick show something that you might run into um, if you haven't seen this before. Uh, we did want to do some kind of torque arm on the motor. Actually, on the bullet frame, the motor has very little movement. It only, it just, there's very little movement right there where if it did come loose, You'd hear it rattling around, but it wouldn't be a major catastrophe like it could be on some other bikes. Anyway, um, we originally got this torque arm from California e-bikes. Uh, it's awesome. It's super heavy duty. However, with the way the frame is made on the bullet, um, it doesn't really fit very well. Um, you'd have to have a bike basically with a standard down tube, an angled down tube on a traditional, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever bicycle that had a diamond, double diamond frame. Because when you try to put this in here, there's nowhere to strap it to really easily. Um, flipping it around, same deal. We could probably strap it to the chain stay, but it's kind of a cheesy way to go. And I think for this one, we're going to use basically the stock part, which is this little bracket that pushes right against the, the frame on the bottom bracket. And the, the Lecky one nut, which is really good at staying tight. Um, while we look for a solution or make one of our own where the torque arm would come up along the seat tube and be able to clamp there or possibly go along the chain stay and clamp along there. But yeah, just... Uh, Nice for more traditional frames, but not on this particular bike. So we're going to work on finishing this up. I, there's a couple other things I'll probably show once it's done, but uh, just a little heads up. If somebody knows of one of those that's specifically made for bullets, shoot us uh, something in the comments because it would be awesome not to have to machine one, but in the end, we may do that just to make this as tidy as it can be. And then, heck, maybe some of you need one out there. So we'll see what happens. All right, next time. Hey guys, it's Greg. We've uh, finished up the Bullet BBS HD conversion. And uh, just a couple quick points about it. Um, batteries obviously mounted here. It does come out. I expect that mostly they'll be charging it on the bike, but um, it is removable. There's very little space in there, so it took a little monkey and around to get that in the right spot. Um, we went with uh, a, a little tube here. It's actually a piece of PVC that runs the wires up to the front from the motor. Um, that lets us run it over the bottom bracket rather than underneath the motor, which might be a little more um, susceptible to road stuff getting thrown up on it or whatever. Just something we're trying on this one. Um, it's got all the requisite stuff, the speed sensor so it can communicate with the computer, the shift interrupter. This is a high power motor. It interrupts the shifting just briefly while you're shifting gears. Um, got a nice color display on it, a throttle, five levels of pedal assist, and should be great for what they're using it for. Um, we're going to take it out for a test ride here pretty quick, and I hope to get some video of that. So I'll talk to you soon. Hi again. <laughs> it's me, Greg. Uh, I figured before we take this thing outside, we might as well see if it runs. This could be one of those things that goes viral for the wrong reason, or could just prove that we've got power. Um, I already tested it with the chain off the bike, and we do have power to the motor. Uh, I'm just going to turn it on and uh, jump up on it, get the back wheel off the ground, and just make sure we've got uh, good, solid 
connection between the motor and the wheel. And uh, heck, what could go wrong? I'll turn it on here. There's not a lot of room, but get it on the front wheel. The back wheel will be off the ground. So we'll just give it a little, little bit of a burp. And there we go. We've got power to the wheel. So it's time to take this thing outside and give it a ride. Next time I see you, hopefully it's breezing down the road. All right, guys. Here's the uh, Bike Feds E Bullet. All ready for the test ride. Uh, maybe saw some of this earlier inside, but got the battery mounted on the steer tube there. There's the BBS HD motor with the leaky 1x11 narrow wide 42 tooth chain ring. Nice offset, puts it right at about 49 millimeters, maybe 50 somewhere in there. Got a new chain. Got a new cassette. We were having some skipping issues on the smallest gears. I assume that most of the riders just leave it down there and just use the power. But this thing's got a lot of juice. I'm gonna suggest they shift. So, I'm gonna go on a test ride. Um, I tried to mount the camera right there on that thing, but it doesn't work super well. It still bounces around a lot. So, maybe we'll try to figure something else out later, but. The important thing is we can deliver it tomorrow if it rolls properly. So here we go. All right, guys, successful test ride. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier that we were replacing the uh, chain and cassette. The other one had gotten pretty ramped and it was skipping in the hardest gears. Uh, very successful test ride. This thing goes 32 miles an hour right now. And I saw a peak of 1,450 watts, so it's got some gumption. Uh, that said, that's letting it run pretty much all out at 32. I think for the motor's health and for the rider's health, we might want to consider dropping that down a little bit. Um, I'll talk to the guys at the bike fed and see what they think. They're all experienced riders, so who knows? Maybe they just want to rip it up. But I will say the motor gets warm, and I don't know that running it at 32 constantly is the greatest idea. I was pretty consistently hitting in the mid-20s, 24, 25, not in the hardest gear, but in like ninth gear and with position number four on the, um, on the power assist or the pedal assist setting. I like using the throttle just to get away from a stoplight, just to get up to speed a little bit. Um, rowing through the gears is a little bit of a challenge. The shift interrupter works well, but... Um, I think most people are just going to ride it in one of the harder gears and getting up to speed by using the throttle and then letting the pedal assist take over works really well. So uh, it's, I, it's turned out really well. I'm, I hope they're happy with it. Uh, we're going to have to do some more beating on it. There's probably about 10 test miles on it right now. So we're going to let it get some use over at the bike fed and then uh, take a look at it, tech it up if we need to and call this one a wrap. See you guys next time.